Hi everyone and welcome to Simple Sado. My name is Peter and I work as a chef and I run this bakery here where we do a lot of pop-ups and we do a lot of bread sale. The bakery is also called Simple Sado. Today I'm going to show you how we make our classic loaf here in the bakery. We are going to make it on a mixer and we are going to need some water, some flour, of course some sourdough and a few extra tools but we'll get into that later. So for now let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is a thing called auto lease. So the first thing we want to do, we will take our bowl. A good thing you can do is to wash this under hot water to get it warm or you can put it on your radiator before you start. If you have a very cold bowl and you pour the water into it, it will just become very, very cold. The water here is quite warm, around 40 degrees Celsius. So here I'm measuring off 740 grams of hot water. I always add the water first because if I put my flour and then I put the water on top, we will have a very dry, soggy flour in the bottom. So always put the water first. Here we have 200 grams of whole grain wheat and here we have 800 grams of wheat. This is strong white flour. Also, this could be a pizza flour. It's available at most places. You want to use a strong flour when you're making these loaves. And the whole grain is for the taste. So now, I'm just going to mix it very slowly on my mixer. And for now, I'm just mixing it until all the water has been absorbed by the flour and then I'm going to let it rest afterwards. One crucial step will be that we need to scrape down the sides because sometimes you will have some dry flour at the sides and underneath. So you have to use a dough cut. This is a quite high hydrated bread. You can see more about the recipe if you go to website called www.breadcalc.com then you can type in all the ingredients and then you can see more about the hydration how much salt you should add all these things so for now we have soaked our flour for auto lease i'm just going to show you how that looks looks something like this and when i touch the sides here it's feeling just quite warm, something like lukewarm. Using my dough cart, scraping down the sides all the way to the bottom. Looks like this. What I want to do now is I want to rest this for about 15 minutes to an hour. So I'm just going to take a bit of water to pour on top here. I can also just put a cloth. This is just so the the surface doesn't dry out. Yeah, see you in a bit. So now we have waited 30 minutes. Just going to show you what happened in these 30 minutes. You can see, since this is very fresh and some pretty strong flour, we can already see how the, the dough has just been working on its own. So now we want to add our sourdough and salt. What you see here is our wheat sourdough equal parts water, equal parts flour. You can watch our other videos how to start a sourdough and how to maintain a sourdough. This one has been made as a starter where it's exactly 200 grams of sourdough. You will learn how to do this and it's quite easy. So now I'm just going to dump all my sourdough into my auto lease, my dough. I'm using a wet hand because, you can, as you can see, I'm not sticking to the sourdough. I have put a rubber band just so I can track how active my starter is. And by the time it has doubled in size and it's 
maintaining its, you know, its peak, it's ready to use. We can also smell it, we can taste it if you want. It has to just taste slightly acidic. If your sourdough is too acidic, you will have a hard time making this bread. And you will also get maybe a, a dough that's over fermenting, or you will have one that has a very sharp acid taste. So now I have 200 grams of sourdough. I'm also going to add my salt. For this recipe, it's 22 grams of salt, which equals 2% of the total dough. Putting it back on my mixer. At this step, I'm just mixing out the salt into my bowl here. And then I'm just adding a little bit of water. The salt will help to integrate the water into the dough. This is a French term called bassinage. You probably can't pronounce it correctly. So at this point, I'm just slowly adding a bit more water into my dough. If you are new to this, you should probably not do this, add it, as it makes the, the dough much harder to handle. And at this point, we are well above 80% hydration. I'm doing this because I want to make a bread that has a very nice crumb structure and remains moist for many days. For me, this is a more exciting bread to eat. If you are a beginner and you are making these loaves, you need to cut down on the water. It will make it a lot easier. So for now, I have probably mix this for one minute. I don't really have to mix it that long. This is a very nice mixer that we have here in Scandinavia. It's one of the best you can get. So now I'm using a wet hand just to uh, release the dough from my, my hook. And right now the dough is very stressed. If I keep mixing it because of friction it will become too warm and it will split up. So now you can see I can almost not pull it because it's just very tense. So now I'm done mixing and now I just want my dough to relax for 10 minutes before I do anything else. Okay, so now we have waited 10 minutes for the dough to relax. See, it's much more relaxed now. The gluten has become more loose. What we want to do now, we are done mixing. We want to put our dough into this bowl because then it's easier for us to fold. If we are folding down here, it's much harder. I got some neutral oil, it can be any type of oil. I'm just putting a thin layer here, mostly at the sides. And then I'm going to transfer my dough here, wet hand, wet dough card. Then I'm just going to give it one fold. This is called coil fold, so I'm lifting it two thirds and then pulling it back. And I'm using wet hands because this is quite sticky. Just lifting it up underneath itself. Turning the bowl, doing the same thing at the top. I'm basically just doing this until all the dough wants to follow and I'm pushing it underneath itself. By doing this, I'm creating some structure in the dough so it can hold its shape. Just turn it halfway and I'm just doing it on some different angles. And you can see it's just laying quite nicely in the bowl. Then I'm just going to wet my hand. And then I will put a cloth on top 
and it will have to rest until I can see it has relaxed in the bowl. And this usually takes between 15 to 30 minutes. We are ready to perform the next coil fold. See how nice it's laying in a bowl, wetting my hands. And if you have seen our other video when we are making the loaf just by hands, you can get some more information about fermentation and some more information about coil folding. And if you find these videos helpful, please like and subscribe to our channel. Just like before, I'm lifting the top of my dough and you can see now it's falling much easier than the last time. Lifting again, turning it. So I can already feel now that this dough has enough tension and structure to just let it rest. And I'm going to let this rest for about one and a half to two hours. This is the step we called, well actually when we add the sourdough, we start the whole fermentation process called bulk fermentation. We'll talk more about this later. So we are going to let this rest now and then we'll get back to it to perform the final step. So now, have a very nice rice on the dough. Now we want to pre-shape it into two balls since we are making two bread out of this portion so i'm just releasing it from the sides with a bit of water flipping it you can either flip it out like this or you can just lift it out in some of our other videos and on instagram you can see how we are pre-shaping so i'm just going to divide this one into two bits and then I'm going to fold it just with a bit of water on my left hand so I can touch the dough without sticking. So you want to build some tension by pushing the dough under itself and when you have built enough tension you can actually touch the dough without sticking. So that's what we're looking for. We are putting them together so they can remain warm. Usually if we have a big chunk of dough, we want to keep them like this in these small balls so they can help each other remain warm and keep proofing and fermenting. So at this stage, we want to prepare our proofing baskets. These are the ones we are selling on our webshop. They are made out of uh, wood pulp. This is a mixture between wheat and rice flour, 50-50. So I'm just giving this one a small cover. The rice flour and the wheat flour. The rice flour is gluten-free and it's also much more coarse so it soaks the water slowly from the dough, which makes it uh, not stick to our Benetons. Next step is called final shape. These doughs have been resting for half an hour. Now we want to shape them before we are putting them into our Benetons. Putting a small layer of flour on our table. Then I'm turning the, the dry side downwards. Now I can shape the wet interior of the dough and it looks like this. If you want to see how we do this, you can see it on our Instagram and you can just loop the video in there. And there is a ton of ways how to do this. This is the way we prefer. It gives a nice and open structure on our bread. So 
basically I'm just folding it into a square before shaving it together. Next step, giving them a bit of flour. Now you have two choices. You can either just take it and flip it in, or you can flip it into your hand like this on the left hand, and then we can squeeze it together. If we do this squeeze, we will get a larger oven spring because there's more tension. And when I'm pushing it together, I'm not squeezing the whole dough, I'm just locking in the top. So that's the difference. Looks like this, you see, filled with air. Now, what I want to do is I just want to keep them at room temperature for half an hour or so until they fill out the basket. Then they are ready for the fridge. Usually these ferment for about 12 hours. If they are starting to proof a lot and you suspect they are over fermenting, then you have to put them to your fridge at a very cold degrees. Usually we just put them at around five degrees Celsius for 12 hours. That's a good indicator, regular indicator. Yeah, so tomorrow we are going to bake these guys. So see you tomorrow. We are back. Good morning. So 12 hours have passed. And as you can see, our dough here is starting to fill up the Benetton very nicely. And I usually do this little poke test just to see how the dough springs back. So this one is just rising back slowly, which is a good signal. If the dough would just immediately spring back, then it's usually under fermented. That means you need to leave it for a longer time in the fridge. If the dough is just starting to lay flat in your Benetton and starting to become wet at the surface, then it's usually overproofed and then it's pretty hard to save it. That means you will bake a very flat loaf, almost like a pancake. Over here, we got a regular home oven and I'm going to show you the technique we use to imitate a stone bake. So the oven has been heating up on 250 degrees for 45 minutes. In here, we got a baking steel or pizza steel, and in the bottom, we got a small tray where we can just pour in some water. We need to create steam to allow the dough to rise correctly. This is what we call oven spring. If the climate in here is too dry, then it will just immediately set a crust and you won't get a nice rise on your dough. The dough has not been covered inside the fridge, which means it's dry here and it makes it easy for us to just slide it on our pizza slider before sliding it into the oven. Now I'm going to show you how we do it. Here is our bread lame scoring knife. It's handmade by my neighbor and you can buy it in our shop. So what I want to do, I want to aim my dough. And I do that by just looking at the, the side here and then placing it. One bump and it's out. Just going to give it a nice quick score. Like this. You can see it opens up nicely and you can see all the air pockets inside. So now I'm sliding it in and I'm pouring my water and then I'm turning off the oven because I want to shut off the fan and that just makes a very nice climate for the dough to rise. So I leave it like this for 20 minutes and after 20 minutes I'm going to turn back my oven and then I will start baking it. So let's check it out in 20 minutes and I'll be back. And after 20 minutes, our dough has proven nicely in the oven. And now I'm just going to open and it will let out a lot of steam. So watch your, watch your head. It's looking very good. We've got a nice, we've got a nice oven spring. 
So what I want to do now, and I'm just going to turn back on the oven. I'm putting it on hot air, the hot fan, and then I'm just putting it around 220 degrees. You can even put it higher if you like, that's up to you. So now it should bake for another 20 minutes. So 20 minutes with steam and 20 minutes where we are baking and forming this nice crust and this nice taste. We like to bake our bread very dark down here because we want a nice good caramel caramelization around the bread. Yeah, so let's check it in 20 minutes. And our bread has been baking for 25 minutes and as you can see it's quite dark. Nice and caramelized. Looks like this. See a nice, nice ear, nice crust. It smells amazing. Usually you want to leave this bread to cool down before eating them. That just keeps the moisture and all the other stuff. Not today. Thank you for watching and please remember to like the video and subscribe to our channel to help us out. See you next time.